Hey Summoners, it's your host Nathan Ng, but you can call me tonight. <laughs> that one's never worked out for me by the way, but you guys can give it a shot, see what happens. We're gonna hop right into another Pro Guides video. Now, this one is highly requested as uh, my friends have actually personally requested this one because I, I am a feeder, you know, I'm washed up. My glory days are over. But I know a lot of you guys are set on improving, you have the right mindset, and you feel like you're just doing everything right. But at the end of the day, we just all have those games that just seem unwinnable, like if I'm on your team. Many of you guys have been asking what to do when your team isn't that great. So in this video, we'll be discussing how you can win your games with even bad teammates. For our question of the day, who's your go-to champion when you feel like you gotta put on your carry pants and go 1v9? Whenever I feel like I need a hard carry, I pull out Kha'Zix or Nocturne and one-shot someone on the enemy team to make the game easier to win. Are you getting ganked in your own lane, constantly demolished? Well, we've got you covered. Pro Guides is the number one proven way to quickly help you level up your League of Legends skills. Whenever you're looking for tier lists, champion guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Night Blue, Bunny Foo Foo, and Loco Doco support Pro Guides. So what are you waiting for? Click the link and start improving right now. So let's hop into the video. All right, so the most common way to go about playing with a team that's feeding or not playing up to the standard is simply avoid them. Like I avoid my responsibilities. Yep, we're gonna give you some pretty generic advice, which is to split push. However, there is a difference, a big one actually, between rage splitting and split pushing with the intent of winning. Even if your goal is to split push for victory, you still need to constantly take into consideration other factors of the game and not autopilot while running it down a side lane. The first thing to consider is if your champion can even utilize this to begin with. The opposite is also true in that you shouldn't immediately assume that you can avoid split pushing altogether if your character isn't very good at it. If you're playing an immobile marksman like Jinx, you probably shouldn't be split pushing. We've all had that guy who starts running it down the bottom lane because they get tilted. After clearing a wave though, they get ganked by the enemy jungler or mid laner and feed some gold. While the answer isn't to hard commit to split pushing, what you can still do is go to side lanes and clear waves. This is when you react to what's going on elsewhere. Yes, most of the time people will tell you that you shouldn't split push on champions like Jinx, but when the opportunity arises and you happen to be in the right place and the right time, be flexible. For example, you're clearing bottom wave really quickly because you want to group up with your team right afterwards. However, the enemy team starts a 5v4 dive under your team's mid lane turret. If they're unsuccessful in the dive, then you should make the call. Should I group up with my team to defend the turret since the enemy team wasted some cooldowns, or is it too risky for me to go? Will me moving and grouping with my team change whether or not the enemy team can push the turret or not? Based off of these answers, it's your call to regroup or instead stay in your lane to trade a turret. In cases where those hard engages are successful and the rest of your team gets wiped, your best call would be to continue pushing. Your team might flame you and ping you, but let me tell you a little advice that has helped me climb. Because I have such a weak mental, I just go slash mute all. You know, communication is important to winning the game, but for me, if this is the case, you know, you, you don't wanna you don't wanna get in your head. League is supposed to be fun. As a result, you can at least trade back some gold while you're at the map, get some objectives, and push another lane. As long as the alternative isn't losing your nexus, trading something back turns a terrible outcome into one that's much easier to tolerate. Now, let's talk about champions who thrive in split pushing situations like Fiora, Master Yi, and even some mid laners like Zed. With champions like these, remember that it's not just about running it down the lane and going for those turrets. You can buy pink wards, push for some deep vision, and also pay attention to the minimap. When you see every member of the enemy team accounted for, you're free to go at it and hit the turrets for free, or 1v1 the enemy team trying to defend the turret. In cases where they could potentially be collapsing on you, that might be your cue to book it instead. When you make the enemy team respond to you and they send multiple members, your job is to not die. Although you aren't making much progress in taking down turrets, the rest of your team has time to simply make a play or try to catch back up. You'll alleviate the pressure from the other lanes and bring it to your lane, giving your teammates a chance to take some objectives. Essentially, split pushing is one of the most effective ways to carry games in solo queue whether or not the enemy team answers you. We also want to mention that all the points that we're about to mention in this video aren't mutually exclusive to one another. You can use them alone or in conjunction with another in any given point of the game. The second point we have to mention is identifying who is weak on the enemy team. A timeless adage, you're only as strong as the weakest link, can sometimes feel all too real on the summoner's rift. Take advantage of this, guys. The enemy Vayne is 10 and 0, but what if the enemy Fiora is 0 and 6? Logically speaking, there's one scenario you lose and one scenario that you can almost always win. Don't team fight when the enemy Vayne is there and look for any opportunities to abuse that person who's already struggling. Sometimes, the converse could also be true. The enemy Jax is 5-0 with 200 CS at 20 minutes, while the enemy Ezreal is, to put it nicely, running it down. 
You can either send one person to solid jacks and hard engage 4v4 or go all in 5v4 and try to base race the enemy split pusher. There are really two takeaways from this piece of advice, but our focus is on the more proactive part of it. Basically, you need to identify who's strong on the enemy team and who's weak. You'll need to avoid whoever is powerful and take advantage of the weakest member on the enemy team, and this is what we mean by playing proactively. Think about everything you can do to exploit that opening you find on the enemy team. Our next advice is to figure out how you specifically carry your games most effectively. Everyone is better at some things than others. That doesn't mean that you should avoid your weaknesses. In fact, you'll need to practice what you're weak on and improve in the long run. However, there's a time and a place to do that and a time and place where you have a choice. You can opt to what suits you best. If you find more success split pushing, pick champions that can capitalize on this. Here at Pro Guides, we offer tier lists and several series highlighting picks that we think are the best on each patch. Regardless of what niche or role you want to play on the team, there's going to be some pick or a handful of them that can exploit to your advantage. If you like to win lane, win game approach, pick Darius, Shaco, Talon, Caitlyn, and Janna, as they might be your best bet this patch. For you team fighting monsters out there, picks like Cassiopeia and Kai'Sa might be more up your alley. During the game, this might mean quickly adapting as well. Like we mentioned in our previous tip, certain scenarios might affect the flow of the game. While you might be good at one thing like stopping team fights, sometimes you might instead need to direct your teammates and explain how you win. You might need a split push instead, taking advantage of weaker enemies when you pick the champion who's better at team fighting. In cases where your options have roughly the same potential payout, that's when you could make the decision based off of what your champion thrives at. Overall, the best way to climb in League of Legends is to specialize in something. The most common way we see this is in players who one-trick champions or narrow their champion pool. However, this can also be seen in the gameplay as well. Mastering one effective playstyle can make it easy to climb, up to a certain point at least. While you'll see diminishing returns as you climb higher, you can at least take your preferred playstyle whenever it's an optimal choice. When you get really good at team fighting, for example, it shouldn't matter that your teammates suck. Here's a reality check. If you're really as good as you think you are, then you can get good enough to carry them. Go beyond your limits, guys, plus ultra, when you end up losing those fights that strike you as unwinnable. Look over your games and look for stuff that you could have done a lot better. It doesn't matter whether or not those things would have won the fight or not. The point is to slowly improve and learn from each bout. By doing so, you'll eventually get good enough at something that can carry you against the odds. Pros do this all the time. They can carry games even when they don't find insane gold leads. Now, it's about time we talk about a specific method of carrying your teammates. Let's talk about something that's easily forgotten, consistency. If you want to carry your teammates, you need to be consistent. It doesn't matter if you popped off one game and you literally put the team on your back, or if you run it down mid the next game. You've got to be on your A game as much as possible to win. And for me, that means having Boba by my side every time I play a game of ranked, so you know, I stay at my peak mental and physical condition. Sometimes, it's not even your job to carry, even if you want it to be. Instead, you need to understand what your role is and play that role well or at minimum just okay every single game. During games where you get fed, you need to play team fights well. Pay attention to cooldowns. Know what you need to look out for and play towards win conditions. To get a better understanding of what win conditions could be in each game, follow us on Pro Guides. We have a ton of that information. Learn to be better at your role and constantly improve. If you can outperform your opponents in more games than you don't, it makes it easier to carry games. You already know. It's easier to carry with a lead than without one. Some games, you're just gonna get camped and that's fine. Be the best pressure sponge you can be. Let the enemy jungler gank you and avoid dying. Waste their time. Let your teammates play their lane aggressively on your own jungler to freely do whatever they want. Other games, someone else on your team is just popping off. Your job is to keep them alive, be the best bodyguard and babysitter imaginable. Throw your body at them, protect them, earn a raise, do whatever it takes to be the best at what you need to do. I know a lot of us have this misconception that a good player can constantly 1v9 games. You look at their match history, see all green, and see that they're a highlight reel every game. This is most likely not my case. Don't look at my match history. That's why I'm not telling you my IGN this time. Some players are like this for sure, but not every player needs to be. An equally great player is someone who can consistently do their job and have more impact than their direct opponent instead. We've talked about split pushing and team fighting a lot, but another thing that you can do to carry your teammates is by making picks. The former two methods are generally the two ways you can force objectives and progress the game. Picking off an opponent can make both of these things easier. If you catch an enemy and make it a 5v4 scenario, for example, 
You can force an objective and make the opponent walk into you. Now that you've got that team fight you've always wanted, you're at a numbers advantage instead of a disadvantage. Alternatively, a numbers advantage buys your team more time to continue pressuring multiple turrets. It'll be harder for your opponent to answer either side of the map and thus, you'll have a large window of time to proactively push for turrets. Certain champions can take advantage of this along carrying team fights or winning the lane phase. A good example is currently Ash. My personal favorite is Talon or Zed because if you pick somebody off in their jungle during a rotation, it will make the team fight a 4v5 and if you're running ultimate hunter, your ultimate will probably be up by the next team fight. Solo queue is an environment that naturally breeds plenty of positioning errors, especially because of the lack of vision. You can capitalize on this by consistently finding the numbers advantage, sometimes meaning that you can avoid 5v5 altogether. Instead, they'll usually or nearly always be disjointed or outnumbered. At the end of the day though, guys, remember that you're just gonna have some hard games and bad teammates. No one wins all of their games. Make sure to make most of each game and get what you can out of them. If you're constantly learning every game from your own mistakes, then you could go ahead and climb the ladder way more efficiently. On top of that, it's not always your teammate's fault and you could always do something better yourself. So before you go ahead and blame somebody, go ahead and self-reflect and see what you could do better that game. Obviously, this is a team game and some games are unwinnable. But if you self-reflect and self-improve every single game and you use this guide to your advantage, then you can start winning those games more consistently. And that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, we really appreciate all the support that you guys give us. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel and ProGuides.com where we will have so much content dedicated to helping you guys up your gameplay and push for your goals. Again, my name is Nathan Ng. And if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is at Nathan underscore I-N-G. I'm out here trying to get some clout as the kids are saying these days. And I really appreciate all your support. Until next time, guys, good luck on the Rift.